conceptual perspectives people talk Real about talk, it, it throwing shots. all of the elements. <laughs> here dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas uh, i'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hello, everybody. It's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having an unbelievable day. I am still going at it. Um, I'll be going at it for a while. Then I'm going to take a break, go to the gym. Then I'll come back and I'll get at it some more. Look, um, I just want to talk to you a minute. I want to be transparent and honest with you. I want to tell you why I'm so passionate about the work I do in the community department, especially when it comes to the work I do with black males, uh, with black men lead and some of the other ancillary uh, programs we offer to black males that are of adult age, uh, mental health, uh, skills training, so much that is so important to the success of black men, but there's nothing more important than the development of black males you know I look at and I'm seeing so many people all in their feelings about something Deion Sanders is doing that's a part of a career move no matter how much you want to make it about anything else it's a career move it was always a career move for those that don't understand it haven't followed the path of this young brother I'm saying young brother he's probably my age if I'm not mistaken somewhere close if you haven't followed the path you probably are not aware of what's going on right now but Dion has always wanted to coach a power five school uh the first problem was with him is that he didn't initially he didn't have a great degree because he left florida state early went into the league and made mad paper didn't have to have a degree but he wanted to coach and they said one of the things that you're going to need is a degree so he went online and got an online degree uh the other thing that he wanted the job at florida state which is where he played and when it became available, but they said he didn't have any coaching experience and they were looking for someone with coaching experience. So he applied and he got the job at Jackson State. He has made it very clear that at some point he wanted to coach at a Power Five school. For those who don't know what a Power Five schools are, there are five conferences that are considered power conferences. If your school is a part of that conference, you're considered a Power Five school. Uh, California is... Uh, I mean, Colorado is a part of the Pac-12. The Pac-12 is a Power Five conference. So, what he, what, what, what other people aren't doing is they aren't looking at the jobs he turned down. He turned down a job, I want to say, South Carolina, and one more school on the East Coast that he, that was a Power Five school that that he turned down jobs for. He stayed on the job long enough to get a lot done. I read the thank you letter from the athletic director at Jackson State. I just uh, read it and I've shared it online uh, that talked about all the stuff this guy did for that school in that short period of time. Uh, he far exceeded expectations. He did what he needed to do and he's pursuing his thing. But And, and I, I don't want to see him stop. I want to see where, how far he could actually take it. But he's got a right to make choices in his career and what he wants to do as far as personal uh, fulfillment. And Because it's not about the money. The man owns a private jet. Dude is laced. He doesn't need the money. Here's the thing that bothers me is how we can get so upset at Dion for changing jobs and we've got our own neighborhood imploding on itself. Um, you know how passionate I am about black men lead. If you follow me, you know that 
my creating and development of Black Man League came from my study on African-American and adolescent young adult male violence. And I wanted to find a way to mitigate black male violence among our young males. I wanted to find a way to reel that in. And in the research, I, I, I came to an understanding uh, that one of the things that we don't do that we need to do to help manage that is racially socialize our children. And so I decided, okay, I'm going to create a rite of passage. All the other groups have them. Jews have them. Arabs have them. Asians have them. We don't have a rite of passage. We don't have something that designs and defines and lays out a path of what black manhood should look like, how black men behave, what are the responsibilities of black men. And when we don't have it and we leave this important responsibility of the self-discovery to young black males that are in an environment that is inherently hostile to them, that wants to see them fail, that wants to take them from school to prison, that is leaving them to their own wares. And then you end up with situation like hyperviolence. And it turns not only on themselves and other black males, it turns on our daughters. The second leading cause of death between black females 15 to 44 is intimate partner homicide. And the vast majority of those partners are black. The reason I'm upset and talking is because here in Houston, we had another black male show up to a place and try to break in. The woman tried to defend herself, fired a shot at the door to run him off. He came back with an a AR and fired six rounds into her bedroom window, killing her with the kids in there with her. This is an ex that showed up to kick the door in. And when he was in initially repelled, he came back with reinforcements and then turned around and killed her. It left the scene, left the babies orphaned because he's gone forever and mom's dead. I'm seeing this far too much. I'm getting too many of these cases on my desk. This is something that I've talked about and it's getting worse. Look at the numbers, go to CDC, look at the numbers of intimate partner homicide and look at it, especially as it relates to black women. What we teach our boys at Black Men Lead, the number one principle out of the 11 principles of manhood is a black man never brings harm or causes harm to a black female. This isn't a qualifying principle, meaning that if she carries herself a certain way, if she talks to me a certain way, if she accepts my advances, if she honors her word to stay with me forever, it's not qualifying. It's simple. We don't harm our women. If they don't know how to treat us, we let them go. If they don't want to be with us, we let them go. You, you're going to find some pain in this world. Some, somebody's going to tell you they don't love you anymore. Somebody's going to tell you they don't want to be with you anymore. Somebody's going to tell you, hey, I'm moving on. Some of the times they're telling you that because you are doing some crazy ass stuff in the first place. Most of these guys should have been left. The problem is, again, when we don't model manhood, we don't have men in the home. If we don't have men in the home, we don't have men to set the model of what our daughter should look for either. So they go out and they find these guys. They don't know. Guys spitting game, talking good to them. They'll look at it. We idolize thugs. We idolize drug users. We idolize misogynistic men. So when they get somebody like that, they think they got something because that's what we idolize in our community because we, have, we haven't set a standard. We haven't set... Uh, a parameter of manhood. We haven't defined what it is. When I when I decided that I was going to build this program, the first thing I said, "What do we? How do we define man? How do we get it to where it's not abstract, where it's not subjective, where it is an objective idea that everybody can relate to and and, and aspire to? How do we how do we define it?" Well, I came up with the 11 principles. Then I came up with the five P's. The five P's are provi protector, provider, promoter, priest, and prophet. 
And I'm not talking about in a religious sense. I'm talking about priests and prophets are spiritual elements and components of manhood. The, the, the protector, you're a protector, young man, before you are a provider, before you can ever earn a living, you have the physical capacity to defend the females in your, in, in your proximity. You are a protector. You should never allow anything to happen to women, elderly, or the children as long as you're pr present. You should, you should be willing to defend them with your life. That's number one. Number two, you got to be a provider. And when I say provider, I'm not just talking about money. Provide a space of security. Provide a space of power. Provide a space of joy, happiness. Create an environment where people can be who they are. And without fear, without trepidation, without concern about everything's going on, you need to be a provider. Yes, you need to be able to, to contribute, if not pay all of the bills. And, and, and this whole idea of commodifying men, they're saying they're not men because they can't pay out a bill when the median uh, income for black males is $44,000, I think is unrealistic. And I think it sets a st standard of failure. It also sets the mindset for criminality. If I want to be respected as a man, I got to make six figure. I'm not, I'm not, uh, the average, I mean, the median income for black men is $44,000. Only 6% of black men make six figures, despite everybody running around claiming they're doing it. So those are the realities, but 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 it, the thing is, it's not so much about you providing everything. It's about you creating an environment where you're contributing the most. Number one, and if there's a time that you're not, it should be short lived. You lost your job, you got sick, whatever. But you should have a way. And the thing is, it has to be a woman that's plugged into him, that's going to provide the environment for him to be that, that's going to support him, that's going to speak into him, that's going to encourage him, that's going to challenge him. To, to be the best he can be and call him when he's not doing it. And he's got to love her and respect her enough that when she calls him, he's not offended by it, he's challenged by it. But these are the things of manhood. But so you got the the, 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 the protector and the provider, but then you got to have a promoter. So what, the, what promoting got to do with being a man? Well, here, let me explain it to you. When a man is a promoter, it means he's not promoting himself in his house. He's not putting himself over everybody. He's at the bottom. He's the foundation. He's promoting his wife. He's promoting his children. What do you mean by promote? You, he, he's telling people how awesome she is. He's speaking of her skill set. He's putting her in positions where she can succeed by telling people that can give her what she needs, what she's good at. He's promoting his kids. He's sitting up and he's talking about how awesome they are. He's telling people. He's talking to coaches for his sons and his daughters. He's talking to mu musical uh, teachers about this, the, the musical gifts and talents of his daughters and his sons he's he's constantly elevating them by promoting them to themselves and to others he's speaking highly of them i consistently walk by my daughters and it's hey who's the most beautiful girl in the world i am daddy that's something started early and carries on yes you're beautiful yes you are smart nobody's gonna blow your mind by telling you you're beautiful because your daddy has told you that from day one nobody's gonna run game on you because you've seen how a man moves and operates no i'm not perfect no i don't do everything right but i'm present and i'm here and i'll die to protect you protect your mom protect this household it's that simple so i'm a promoter then i'm a priest oh women pray and see that's the thing that we lose religiously you can't out pray a woman a woman is going before god she's gonna pray but that's not the type of prayer i'm talking about i'm talking about the priesthood the priesthood in its purest sense is the direct line from divinity to humanity it is the very source of divine power and prevalence coming through the man into the home it's the connectivity i when i talk to god i'm not talking about god about problems the problems he built me to fix the problems i'm talking about god about power power to protect power to provide power to uh cover all of that black men are coverings we need to be able to define it so that we can hold each other accountable to it having the bag don't make you a man it's a bunch of idiots out there with the bag it's a bunch of cheats out there with the bag it's a bunch of abusive men out there with the bag the bag don't make you a man Oh, you need to have some paper. You ought to want some paper. You ought to want a bill. That's another principle of black men lead. You should own your own, build your own, and grow generational wealth. That's a responsibility. It's not a choice. It's a responsibility. But the, uh, the, 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 having it in and of itself isn't what makes you a man. 
A man, a man is going to sit up and say, nobody is harmed on my watch. Nobody's diminished and, diminished and mistreated on my watch. And even when a man feels slighted, hey, I don't want you anymore. Hey, you ain't all that. Hey, you ain't this. Hey, forget that dude. All of the stuff that, you know, can make a man feel like he's been beat up on. He maintains his, 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 his spiritual equilibrium and his understanding of self. See, that's why it's so important to have an identity because when you're challenged, when you're hit, when you're knocked down, when you're hurt, you don't lean on your emotions to tell you what to do. You lean on your identity. I am a black man, I'm strong. I don't hit women. I don't harm women. I don't harm, I am going to stand up even in this dark hour and I'm going to walk it in a way that people can observe me living in the strength of my identity when, when, when I see so many people that want to hurt. Well, see, that comes from a feeling of, uh, 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 of impotence and a lack of power. When I don't feel I have power, I strike out at the things that I can hit. So then you've got the provider, you've got the protector, the provider, the pr uh, promoter, and the priest. Then you have the prophet. I'm not talking about the prophet uh, that tells you everything that you want to know about your future. I'm talking about the prophet that speaks into your life, that tells his kids that they can do anything that they set their mind to, that tells his woman that she's beautiful, that tells his woman that she's powerful, that tells his woman that, that, that she can do anything she sets her mind to, that speaks nothing but edification into the home. It's not that there's no accountability, but even in accountability, I'm speaking from a place of edification. I'm not, I don't ever want you to feel diminished by my words. I don't ever want you to feel broken and beaten up by my words. I want you to understand that I believe in you, that I'm holding you up, that as your father, I've got your back, and as your husband, I'm holding you together. I want that as a man. But we've got to teach it. We can't keep leaving our daughters in the hands of men who are mo emotionally and mentally unstable because we failed our boys. It was Frederick Douglass that stood up and said that it's easier to build strong children than it is to repair broken men. There's an African proverb says that the child that does not, that is not embraced by the village will burn it down to feel its warmth. And we keep asking, why is it happening? We haven't embraced, we haven't taught, we haven't loved, we haven't built, we haven't prepared black men. And until we do, we're going to have this problem. You got so much smoke for Dion. And in, in, in the inner city communities are burning with hatred, burning with violence, burning with poverty, burning with a lack of identity. We're in an identity crisis. And we're expecting one man to fix it through his success and our observance of it. That's not how it works. So here's my challenge to you. Stand up, become a part of the solution. Learn the things that we need to do to create better environments. We need to socialize our boys. We need to create an environment. We've got to have a means and a mechanisms through which we can answer and respond to the 1.5 million black men that are missing. 1.2 of them or close to it are imprisoned. And I've, I've wrote papers for, on adverse childhood experience, experiences and how having an incarcerated parent has long-term far-reaching of uh, impacts in mental health, in physical health, in total uh, life outcomes. We've got to understand that just sitting up thinking and hoping and wishing isn't a plan. Hoping and wishing isn't a strategy. It's time that we start taking action. Look, I'm going to get off of here, um, but I, ha I had to touch on that. I'm hoping that we can 
build, grow, come together and unify, the unification of black people would mean so much in the way of power that those people, the other people, are literally terrified of the idea. That's why so much energy is invested in keeping us divided. On that note, I'm getting ready to get out of here. Um, you saw uh, the intro. So if you believe in what we're doing, show some love, show some support. Click the link in the description box and support our work. Or if you prefer to give by way of Cash App, do that. Uh, but definitely show work. What we do changes lives, but it doesn't come free. It comes at a price. Uh, show some love. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. I still have work to finish. I still have to get to the gym. Um, I've got so much to do, but you guys keep me lifted. It is your prayers and in your words of encouragement have got me through the tough moments of this year. I am so excited about what's coming, what we're doing, and just keep me lifted because I'm still striving. I'm still fighting. I'm still giving. I'm still loving. I'm still creating, and I will do it until I take my last breath. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have a great day.